started and play. Um, and um, you're welcome to join in and sing with us. You're welcome to just find your seats and prepare your hearts. Uh, you're welcome to um, fellowship with one another um, and listen to our music. So here we go. Love incarnate, love divine, star and angels gave the sign, bow to babe on bended knee, the Savior child is born, he shall reign forevermore. No song for our prelude is going to be the first Noel.
everyone to Christmas Eve worship. Um, it's just wonderful to see you all tonight. Thank you for getting out in the cold and braving the weather and coming here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ with us tonight. Amen? Amen. So as we get started tonight, I, I want to just introduce one of my friends who is here tonight. She's the Reverend Vanessa Levine and her husband, Terry Levine, that are here. And I have to tell you, she is, a, she is the clinical director in, for regional services for Methodist Healthcare. But when I met her, she and I had just embarked on this uh, pastoral journey on the border. And I met her <laughs> in Carrizo, right? Carrizo Springs. It's been a long time that we've known her, but anyway, I just want to welcome you all tonight. So glad that you're here with us, and God bless you all, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to everyone that's here, and uh, let me look around. Do we have other visitors here? I, like, I look back here, and I think I saw Pat Stamper here with us tonight. How about that? When we were at retreat, I kept saying the whole time we were there, the famous Pat Stamper, because I had heard her name so many times, right? And all her grandkids. So let's go to this God now and have our gathering words. Okay. Oh, come on, come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Thank you. 
A child has been born for us whose name is called Wonderful Counselor, Good Shepherd, Deliverer, Lamb of God, the Word, Mighty God, First and Last, Author of Life, Morning Star, Star, the Light, Everlasting Father, Bread of Life, Resurrection and Life, Light light of the World, the Mind, Fruits of Peace, Chief Cornerstone, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Way. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Bruce. Tonight, we light the first Advent candle, the candle of watching and waiting, for we have searched and waited for our Savior to come to us. We light the second candle, the candle of preparation, as we have prepared our hearts to receive the Savior. We light the third Advent candle, the candle of beholding and believing, because we have seen the mighty power and the love of God in our lives. We light the fourth Advent candle, the candle of rejoicing, because we have been blessed with the good news of God's love for all people. Now, the time is near. The one who will save us brings God's light into our world. We light the Christ candle in celebration of God's most precious gift to us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Glorious God, you present us with the most precious gifts. We are so grateful. We praise you for all your blessings in our lives. Work in our hearts this night, O God. Prepare us for your presence. Work in our lives that we may reach out to others in comfort and compassion. And work in our world that the darkness that has encompassed it may be dispelled by the brightness of your love and your gift. In faith and complete expectation we pray. Amen. Welcome everyone. My name is Kara Coffee Hall and I serve as music director here at Chapel Hill. I'm thankful to be this evening and I'm so glad that each of one of you are here uh, this evening as well. We're so blessed with so many volunteers that make each service possible. Um, tonight in the band is uh, Scott Hall, Mallory Melcher, Tracy Simon, Luis Melcher, and Carrie Turner. And then we have the blessing of having some additional musicians that will be joining us. Um, Elizabeth Vega and Annabella Vega, and then Mitzi and Selby Anderson, um, who um, so generously volunteer for our 830 service each week. So we'll have uh, the blessing of hearing those uh, musicians today as well. Um, in the sound booth, we have Pat Courtney, Randy Basosa, Marty, shout out, and uh, Brian Hildebrand. He didn't know I was going to do that. I think I embarrassed him. And um, and then Debbie and Mamie making sure that we have our candles and um, our worship, our, our sanctuary is welcome and inviting. And thank you to the heat being on tonight. <laughs> All right. If you would, uh, go ahead. We're going to stand and sing Angels We Have Heard on High.
Everybody. So there's a, an awful lot of praying people here tonight, I'm thinking, and that's a good thing because as we lift our prayers to God this night, we sure have a lot to be thankful for, a lot of people in the world who need for us to be praying for them right now, a lot of things going on in the world that we know God can resolve or that we would love for God to resolve. And so we just want to lift our prayers together, bring everybody in your hearts as we go to this God now. Will you bow with me, please? Precious, holy, and loving God, we are grateful for this night. We are grateful for what it means. We're grateful, O oh Lord, that you have come to us, that you have loved us so much that you have come to us you come to us and you've saved us. You have lived our life. You have died our death. You have taken our pain. You've laughed and had dinner with friends and had wonderful family and had all kinds of things that we experience in our life. And yet, and yet, you went to the cross for us. You put your life in the hands of Mary and Joseph, a human father and mother, and you entrusted yourself and you entrusted our salvation to them and to the people around you. And so, Lord, tonight as we gather, we entrust ourselves to you. We entrust our heart and our faith and our life into your mighty and powerful hands. We entrust all those people, Lord, who live in shame and live in ways that are death-seeking almost to you, O oh God, knowing that you will save everyone, everyone that will look to you, Lord, we pray to you tonight, O oh God, for our children, for our families, and for the people of this community. Lord, that everyone here knows you and that we get to know everybody here in your name. And Lord, as we go to the Word and we hear Scripture read all night tonight, we need to find our place in your Scripture and in your heart. No one 
loves us like you. No one. And for this, we are so grateful. We're so grateful. Precious God, tonight I lift our military men and women that are scattered all over the world. I pray for them. I pray for them to find a safe way home, God. I pray for their families. I pray for their children. Lord, tonight we have people who are in the hospital. I, particularly tonight, oh Lord, I, I pray for Chaplain Posey. I lift him to you, oh God, and I ask your sweet, comforting words to be in his ears tonight as he's in the hospital. I ask for your sweet, comforting love to be with Russell tonight as he's in the hospital and to be with that whole family, Lord, as they do their best to take care of him. And Lord, I pray for those that we don't know about, but you know about. You are our healer, and you're the one who loves us. And so we lift them to you, God, in perfect, perfect confidence that your will done is the best and the most beautiful thing that happens in our lives. Precious Lord, I thank you tonight for these musicians and for all these people that are giving their time to serve you. I thank you, God, that your words ring so true through all these wonderful things that we'll hear tonight, through these scriptures, through this beautiful, beautiful music, that our hearts come to life with your love, oh God. And I thank you for the people who have driven in from all over. I pray for the people who have come from Seguin and Kerrville and from different places. They've come to visit and come to be here with us tonight. I thank you for their safe journeys, oh God, and I thank you for their safe journeys home. And Lord, we lift this time to you aware that you are with us in every thought, every word, and in every deed. And we pray it all in the name of your Son, Jesus. And together, we pray that prayer that he left us all by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now the peace of the risen Christ is with you all. And also with you. Let's all turn and share signs of gracious greetings to each other. And let's be sure and turn around and wave to all of our families who are worshiping with us at home on Facebook tonight. And then if you would, uh, join us and stand again as we sing, Behold.
Tonight I'm going to be reading from the second chapter of Luke, and it will be about the birth of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from that house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy from all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in their heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And this is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God.
God, God, we're so thrilled to be with you, to be with you, to hear the old stories, to hear the way that you have come into our world to save us. And Lord, help us to find ourselves in that story. We forget, I think, that you came as a person with parents and you depended on people to love you and protect you and to care for you. And so, God, as we think about these things tonight, help us to wrap our story and our hearts around your story, that we might be faithful, that we might be loving, that we might be your people. And may the words of my lips, may all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You're our rock. And you're our Redeemer, and we really do love you as we lift this time to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So I'm really looking around here and seeing all these really beautiful children around here tonight. It's just an amazing thing. I remember baptizing that little boy this last year, and what a wonderful, wonderful day that was. And... I remember baptizing two of those little children like in, in like in a year's time. Reading Jesus' birth story always reminds me of my own children coming into the world. And it's supposed to, okay? Jesus came into the world to human parents, even though Jesus was the son of his father in heaven. But I was thinking today and remembering about my youngest son, Sean, who was born at Fort Sill, and I'll never forget it. I remember seeing his beautiful little face, and then those first moments that my mom and dad walked into the room right after he was born, and they were there really to just assure me that this was the most gorgeous child that they had ever seen in their entire life and that they were sure he was the most brilliant kid in the world and just going to be the most talented, you know, all that stuff. And by now you figured out that my family talks in superlatives, so that's just the way they were. But they were absolutely amazed that their new grandson was wrapped up and swaddled in a drab olive green little blankie around his legs with a little drab olive green cap and a little onesie 
and little booties that looked just like military wear. It was just so funny, you know? <laughs> My parents had never seen that. I had never seen that. It looked like he was just a little tiny baby soldier that they were, <laughs> that they had delivered to me. <laughs> But all the children that were born at Fort Sill were dressed in, in colors that emulated their fathers and mothers who were on active duty. And I'll never forget, you know, the most wonderful thing. My mother was absolutely crying with joy. She was just so thrilled to see this kid and so amazed he was just this, he was a huge baby, just really long and really loud and really handsome. And my mom was just thrilled. It's just one of my favorite memories of all times. When we read this passage about the birth of our Savior, the most striking thing to me about Jesus' birth is that this new father watches this new mother give birth in a barn alone without their family with them. The family is not with them. Their family will not open their doors to them. They're in Bethlehem where Joseph's entire family lives and they will not open their doors to Joseph and his new wife. And Mary will give birth to the newest family grandchild while they're in their hometown alone with her husband in a barn, okay? Despite the fact, <laughs> see, despite the fact that the hospitality, having an open door and food, even to strangers, is probably one of the most single important treasured traditions of their family faith. And they are devout, righteous, holy. People. We know this about them just from reading our Gospels, right? But the family is willing, unwilling to accept them or to see them or to have them in their home because they're sinners, they say. But you see, little do they know that they have turned away the King, the Savior, of the entire world. Imagine what that must be like for them now, <laughs> right? I mean, imagine, imagine. But you see, this is really good news for us, I think. What happens is that the angel comes into the darkness and the glory of the Lord begins to shine around them and shine around the shepherds. And what we learn here is that this is a really powerful moment for anyone who believes that they might not be worthy or that they may have done so many things in their life that God could never forgive them or that they don't have any way of ever being able to really reach out and trust that this God could ever love them. They, they, they can't imagine that someone like them is someone that God can love. Well, God loves you, okay? God sent his son to save you. The angels showed up and they said, I am bringing great news of great joy for all people. You see, this is good news for them, for me, for you, for all of us, that God always chose to come into the midst of the darkness and to save us, to save us. It's a miracle of love. It's just a miracle of love as God gives himself to us. It's just 
powerful. God has come to save us. He has come to move us from darkness to light. He has come, as David said in Psalm 23, to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. The light of the world has come to us as a baby. Jesus is God's testimony of love for us. And so, as our ushers now come together to receive our offering here tonight, I want to put an invitation out. If anyone wants to come and pray, if anybody would like to join the church, if there's anything that we can do for you tonight, please come and let's pray. Precious and holy God, in your goodness, you sent angels to wise men to bring gifts fit for a king. Joseph and Mary were never alone. You were always with them. And that's the way it is with our lives as well. We are never alone. You are always with us. And so tonight, oh God, as people offer, we pray to thank you for their offering. We pray that you bless their life, that you bless their offering. And we pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
please stand. Chapters 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and he made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. As the candles are lit, you're invited to sing with us.
I wish I had a picture of this. What a wonderful, wonderful evening. And so tonight, as we leave this place, let's be sure and, and take the spirit of Christ into our heart. Let's leave with the love of God. Amen. As we are sent in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let's be a blessing to all. Amen. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.